Office of such many and many renowned universities. And he's currently the visitor, uh, visiting professor at this uh, uh, Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich, Germany. Indeed, Professor Weidmann has many uh, pioneering contributions in the quantum information theory and quantum computations. Or the most uh, celebrated one is the weak measurement and weak values. But his other, he has many other pioneering works like, uh, for example, the uh, interaction measurement, the counterfactual communications, protective measurements, teleportation and continuous variables, and this uh, famous this Goldberg Heidman quantum cryptography protocol with the uh, orthogonal states. And he has also started. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Uh, thank you for the introduction. I hope the people will hear me. Yes. Yes. Um, I have not finished yet. Just, ah, sorry, the internet is unstable. Maybe I'll just check. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear me now? Can I start? Yeah, let me just uh, take one minute to finish my introduction. Okay. Yeah. So as I, as I, I was saying that uh, he has served as uh, the editors in many premier journals and he has written many hours. And uh, to name a few that he's the life member of the American Physical Societies and also the Chatter Honorary Fellow of the John Spell Institutes and many more. And he has published uh, over 200 publications in the premier journals. and. Uh, Many of his pioneering ideals have been experimentally tested worldwide in many, many times. So today we have the opportunity to listen to him once again. Uh, on his, he will be talking about his recent work, this weak value, a property of a single system. So with this, I invite Professor Weidman to give his lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for introduction. Um, I decided to talk about uh, weak value because it's most close to my heart. And I think I have a lecture which is kind of uh, appropriate for a summer school. I think I will explain what weak value and what mean weak measurements are. And uh, I will also talk about some uh, recent uh, experiments. Okay, so uh, it's the history, the first paper was uh, uh, about a week in, in which weak value were introduced, uh, was the weak value uh, as a measuring procedure uh, for pre-selected pre and post-selected ensembles of quantum system, which defines a new kind of value for a quantum variable, which we call the weak value. So the first in the beginning, we have seen a weak value, introduced weak value, as the outcome of a standard uh, quantum measurement in which we make coupling weaker and we make our system pre and post selected. But uh, weak value is an outcome of a weak measurement. Uh, but uh, it's for a long time I saw that there is a deeper meaning for the weak value, that it's really a property of a single system. And um, recently, I, um, I, I have theoretically and also experimentally uh, showed that the weak value of an observer is a robust property of a single print post-selected quantum system, rather than a statistical property. Because when we perform standard weak measurement and uh, with, weak, uh, with weak coupling, we need to perform the measurement on an ensemble. And uh, measurement on ensemble, then uh, after averaging, we'll get this weak value, which is, seems to be, uh, which is statistical, uh, has a statistical nature. And I want to try to say that, uh, no, weak value is really a property of every pre and post selected quantum system. And I will show it by trying to see that it's connected or look like eigenvalue. 
Everyone agrees that if quantum system has an eigenvalue in an eigenvalue, that it's a property of a single system. Okay, weak value is a property of a single system. Let's briefly remind uh, the two-state vector formalism of quantum mechanics. Uh, just to be sure, uh, it's just, let me, okay. Uh, so, um, usually, a quantum system uh, defined by uh, measurement in the past. If I prepare a system by measurement, um, then uh, it's described by a quantum state, which evolves. In, if the Hamiltonian is not zero, the psi changes, but it's prepared uh, at particular T1 by measurement. And from now on, there is a unitary evolution. If there is a zero Hamiltonian, we have this quantum state remain psi forever. The claim is that if I make another measurement, and find the system in another state. We cannot find it in an orthogonal state, we can find it but different state. Then in between, between T1 and T2, I want, uh, I want to claim that the system is described by the two state vector, both quantum state from the preparation and quantum state from the post selection. And I want to say that there is complete uh, analogy, uh, it's, uh, Psi and phi might be different, but uh, they both important on the same footing. There is information from pre-selection, then information from post-selection. Both give us information about the system in, in the time in between. Uh, in fact, this story was found a long time ago by Aaron Bergman and Leibovich when they said that if we consider a strong measurement in between, then there is this uh, famous Aronov Bergman Leibovich formula for probability of a measurement in between. And as you see, psi and phi enters here uh, sim in symmetric way. Uh, this, is, mm, this is a formula for probability for any uh, one Neumann measurement in between. I think. Uh, what maybe more interesting or uh, more profound was uh, what was um, this is a uh, discovery of this weak value. And this tells us that if instead of strong measurement here, we will perform a weak measurement, then of course a weak measurement will have a pointer like a normal measurement. But this pointer, instead of showing one of the eigenvalues with some probability, uh, it will show us this weak value given by this formula. And uh, this was his first paper, the outcome of measurement with weak coupling is a weak value. What I will mainly will try to persuade you today is that there is a more robust meaning. It's just any coupling. It might be strong coupling for a very short time. It's not just weak coupling. But um, essentially, the system pre and post selected is coupled according to the weak value. Okay, so let's start uh, slowly and um, talk about measurement. The value of O is an outcome of a measurement. This is um, standard quantum mechanics. If we have an eigenstate of variable O, O equal one here, for example. Uh, and uh, then to, to find it out, we use an Hamiltonian, the Van Neumann Hamiltonian. The Van Neumann Hamiltonian uh, is, this is G of T is a time uh, function which tell us when there is a measurement, it's not zero during the measurement, integral equal one. O is our, what we want to measure. And uh, P is conjugate momentum to the pointer variable. So this is our measuring device. This is one pointer. In the beginning, our pointer shows zero. So we apply our measurement. And during the measurement interaction, the pointer moves. 
and it shows us the eigenvalue. It moves here to, to one. If the eigenvalue is one, it will just move here. Now, and uh, in fact, what is written here, this is a quantum. This Hamiltonian is a quantum probe. The probe will move here. The very important part of the measuring device is amplification. When we'll see the quantum probe, we we'll have to look on it. And then we observe it. And then we know that it's one. Here I say just the patient tell us it's one, it's coupled to one, but it's still the P is a conjugate of Q, which is a quantum probe of measuring device. But we we'll have to look on the pointer. And now we see, and of course, if it's uh, show quantum state is one, we will see one. And maybe everything is quantum. There is no kind of exact uh, pointer doesn't show exact value. So it has to be, but it, it, it shows us a value with very good precision. So our pointer should be very well localized. Originally, it's very well localized around zero. So it has very small uncertainty. The Q, the pointer variable has very small uncertainty. We perform our measurement and then as is, it moves this just one. And uh, then, uh, so we, originally we can uh, describe it by Gaussian around zero with very small uncertainty. The uncertainty doesn't change and the Gaussian shifts by one. This is a standard measuring procedure. Now, the problem of this measuring procedure, since we need very small uncertainty in our pointer, otherwise that pointer doesn't show well, uh, if delta Q is small, then conjugate delta P is very big. So in our Hamiltonian, we have uncertain, very large uncertainty for P. And our Hamiltonian is very large and uncertain. So it changes. It's, it's a strong measurement, strong measurement, quantum measurement change quantum system. And then, so this is what a strong measurement is. Now, I want now to define weak value as an um, outcome of this standard measuring procedure in which we make coupling weak. How we can make coupling weak? In many discussion of weak values, uh, the, value to, the way to do it is just make G small. Uh, it's coherent, it's okay. Uh, I prefer um, another way to present it. I, another way to make it weak is just to make P, P small. When P is very small, then interaction Hamiltonian is weak. And this is what I want to do. I want to, to make uh, uncertainty in P is very small. A part of this, everything is before. So uh, the quantum evolution of our quantum measurement is the same. So our wave function, because the, the P is small, the delta P is very small, delta Q is very large. So our pointer is very, before the pointer, you see, it was very localized. But now the pointer is very wide. This is our pointer. It doesn't sit in zero. It kind of spread out. But interaction do the same. It just make this, the whole wave function move by the same number one. The wave function moves by one. Weak measurement, H interaction small, delta P is small, but delta Q necessarily large. So this is a picture of what's going on. Equations are the same equation. We have this, the Gaussian shifted by, again, by one. The only difference here is that the delta Q now is very large. Okay, so this is a quantum part of the measurement. This is not enough. Um, the measurement didn't finish. We don't know the outcome. It's just our quantum probe um, did some interaction and changed. We have to observe it. We have this pointer, which is very, very large. It shifted by one. But how we can see this shift by one on this very wide pointer? What we have to do, we just look. When we look, we have some probability to get some number. Let's say we get it here. 
this this is minus 15 and doesn't give us this one so but uh, of course we cannot see the result of measurement while when our pointer is so uncertain but we can see it we repeat it many times so we did it once and then we'll do it again we repeat the whole procedure once more and we'll get another number and uh, we write it down and we repeat it again and we get another number we write it down and we repeat it again and um, we get again one more number and then after many 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 times we had many many numbers so we look uh, on average of these numbers and this average in the end will show us this one expectation value of all these outcomes will, will give us uh, in essentially the weak value so it's a standard measuring procedure frequently in the experiment we have to repeat it because when I'm all kind of uncertainties maybe even not quantum uncertainty people repeat this and look and then they look on average so and um, we see there is uh, this is uh, this was a measurement of eigenvalue. But what was the definition of a weak value? Weak value is an outcome of a weak measurement. If we start with eigenvalue, our weak our outcome will be exactly this eigenvalue. But according to our definition, is weak weak uh, weak coupling. So we get our uh, weak. Um, Weak value is an eigenvalue give us the same. Weak value shows us eigenvalue. Weak value is an outcome of a weak measurement, shows eigenvalue. Okay. Um, now, in this case, we had uh, our system in an eigenvalue. Sometimes our system might not have an eigenvalue, it's a proposition of different values. Here, for example, I consider superposition of value zero and value two. Then, the, of course, we have expectation value. We can calculate it. It's equal weight. So the, uh, the expectation value is again one. The claim is that our weak measurement procedure, which I just described, this time will show expectation value. So let's repeat the story. When we apply our interaction we will have superposition part will go to two and part will not move after this we'll have the superposition of a pointer not moved when it's zero and moved to two and then we'll see two and when uh, we write it down and then we repeat it and write it down and and so till now you see our pointer is really very sharp so it's not a weak measurement. This is a strong measure. So even in a strong measurement, in a strong measurement, we cannot see the expectation value on one number. We can see zero or two. But if we we'll make an ensemble, the average, in the end, we will know uh, the ensemble will repeat it many, many times. We'll have many, um, many times two, many times zero. This is a, this is a number of two, this is a number of zeros. And the expectation value will be just calculated from the number of zeros times zero plus num probability of two times two, a number divided by the total number, there's a probability. And uh, when we have large ensemble, it will give us one. Clearly, you want to find the um, expectation value, you repeat it many times and make statistics. We see in the end the expectation value one and it come out out of this measure. And uh, we can look on it in uh, quantum. Uh, this is just was schematically quantum. There is this uh, well localized pointer. And this well localized pointer after the interaction becomes this entangled with our variable. And uh, when we look on it, we look one of them. And uh, we look one of them, and then uh, we do the statistic which I explained before. Now let's go to the weak regime. The same procedure, but our, uh, our delta Q is very large. Delta P is very small. This is what's important. When delta P is very small and P is around zero, then it, 
interaction is zero. Unfortunately, delta Q has to be very large. And this is what we see here. So we perform this measurement. It shifts, there is an entangled superposition of shifted Gaussian and not shifted Gaussian. And um, so um, we'll start, look, uh, this is repeated many times because every time we'll get something here. When we'll repeat it many, many times, it will make statistics. Statistics will sit around one, around expectation value. So the procedure, the weak measurement procedure, give us expectation value. So essentially, even in, the, in this original paper, or at least in PRA after it, we were kind of uh, happy and uh, proud that the weak value is a meaningful value. It give us the expectation value when the system is not post, um, here it's, um, when the system is not post-selected. The pre measurement give us this weak value. Okay, so our measuring procedure will give us uh, with weak coupling, give us expectation value. So if we have system expectation value, weak value will show it. If we have system is eigenvalue, weak value will show it. But interesting thing come when we make pre and post selection, as I said. So we have a system pre selected one, post selected uh, in some other state. And um, we consider particular pre and post selection. The pre selection is a proposition of zero and two. And post selection is another superposition of zero. It, in fact, very close to it. It looks the same. Uh, we have the same uh, probability. The only thing, uh, the, the the only the only thing is that here it's minus. So it's really very different quantum state. The probability in this state and in these states are the same. And I, you see, it's. Uh, but um, this is around uh, we almost equal probability of zero and one. So we are not too far from one. But because this state is orthogonal, uh, the weak value is very different. The weak value you see what's entered here is a scalar product at the bottom. And because here it's plus and here it's minus, this state is pretty not orthogonal. Orthogonal, it's not defined, but it's they're not too far from orthogonal. This number is very small. So automatically, we'll get this weak value um, very large. Uh, 11. The maximum um, value, eigenvalue of O is uh, 2. Might be 0 or 2. And here we get 11. So let's see how it's happening. Um, the beginning is really the same as before. We have this wide uh, pointer and uh, we have this uh, interaction and it has coupling and we'll get the uh, entangled superposition because zero doesn't move and two does move. So we have this, you see, there is a more amplitude of two than zero. This is why I write it this way. This is zero, which is not moved. This two is moved. And it became entangled with my, my system with eigenvalue zero and eigenvalue two. This is, this, is, this is what's happening now. Now, if we look, we will get something around one. Expectation value here currently a week, whatever. If we don't, uh, if we don't do post-selection, we'll get something here. But we do post-selection. We post-select this state. When we post-select this state, we have interference of these two Gaussians. And uh, they are pretty equal, but one with minus and one with plus. In the end of the day, it will kind of cancel. It's here. And uh, what we'll have, we'll have, uh, again, white Gaussian, more or less like before, but the center will be far away. In fact, the center of this Gaussian will sit around 11. When we post-select on this state, this is what we get. Uh, I normalized after the, after I post selected. This is we have this. I normalized it, and so this is a new Gaussian. It sits here. 
And uh, of course, uh, we, again, once we did this, we have this big pointer showing 11, but we cannot see it because the pointer is very, very wide. Well, when we'll try to see, we'll see some number, which is kind of, and then, uh, but then we'll see more numbers. And after uh, we'll make the statistics, the statistics should end up somewhere here. This should give us a weak value. And, um, and making this ensemble value large, we'll get this weak value. Okay. And um, in fact, what we'll see, a real part of this weak value, um, but there is also a way to say is the imaginary part. You see, in principle, this, uh, but in this case, no problem. I arrange my weak value, which is real. So there is no, this is exactly what is going on here. Sometimes it can also have uh, imaginary component, but in this case, there is no imaginary component. So the weak value is real, and this is what we will see. So when we have print post selected system and we perform this weak, one Neumann weak coupling, what we'll see, we see a weak value. So uh, what we have showed here is a weak value is an outcome of weak measurement for a period of time. This G of T, it was some, it took some time during the whole period we were weak coupling. And because of all this coupling in the end of the day, we, we got this weak value. Now I want to change the paradigm. I want to say that it's weak value is not it's not necessarily related to measurements, or weak measurements. Weak value is a property of a print post selected system at every moment. This is what I want to say that this is, this is really a property of a quantum system. Now, if we look on this weak measurement procedure, we see that in essentially, and we have a weak coupling. If you have a weak coupling, then the psi is during the whole time and phi is during the whole time. At every moment, we have the same two state vector. Psi phi, psi phi, psi phi. The two state vector define as weak value. So I can say uh, there is no contradiction between these two ways. I say at every moment, the weak value is given by this. Then the, during the whole period, it is described by this expression. So I can believe in the second one and it will be consistent with the first one. During the whole period of time, we had this weak value as a property of every moment of time, but it, during all moments of time, it was the same weak value. And this is what we found in our weak measurement procedure. So uh, during the weak measurement, the weak value is constant. So we get the results specified by the weak values at every moment of the weak measurement coupling. If the coupling is not so weak, the weak value is still constant. Uh, when we make a coupling of this Hamiltonian, but it's stronger, C doesn't change. Weak value of C doesn't change. So the weak value should be the same during the whole procedure. But what change when, when we have this strong coupling? Psi is changing, phi is changing. C doesn't. So um, still, even we have a strong measurement, there is a particular weak value during the whole time. It's not given by this formula. The formula is more complicated, uh, but the important part, it doesn't change. So I still one can't believe it, what I wrote here. At every moment of time, there is this weak measurement. There is some uh, maybe uh, difficulty because uh, it is not, uh, if, the, if the measurement is very weak, then automatically everything will be good because my weak value uh, psi doesn't change significantly, phi doesn't change significantly, I, I see the weak value. If my measurement is not weak, then I say psi and phi changes. This formula is not correct. And then uh, the first 
I, the first property might not be, might not work. The reading of a strong measurement, if, if you have a strong measurement, we will not see weak value as an outcome. Even there is one, if you have a pre and post selected system, I claim and I have a strong measurement in between, there is particular weak value at every moment of time. Now, if, for example, I use this sigma x, sigma, this is famous sigma z equal 100. But uh, if I make a strong coupling and I will use this measuring device, this kind of unusual. My pointer is another spin which rotates depend, depending uh, on the position uh, of my uh, value of uh, sigma z of my spin. In fact, what will rotate the sigma x, for example. Sigma x in the x, y plane, the, the measuring device spin will be rotated. If this coupling is strong, then um, the weak value will not be equal to this. And um, in fact, we made an analysis. Uh, when it's weak, everything is okay. Is okay. We get weak value 100 and the pointer reading 100, the weak measurement. But when we start weakening the procedure, somehow the pointer still shows big numbers. A weak value, still relatively big, you see, it goes down up to, but they are not go together. So <clears throat> if we have a stronger measuring procedure, then the reading of uh, the measuring device does not show the weak value. And this is, the weak value is, this is, there is a definition of weak value and the second definition. Oh, if one can say, I can add, a very weak measurement on top of weak of strong measurement, and, it, and then I can ask what is the weak value. When I use weak cup, weak measurement, then the definition is okay. When I use strong measurement, then of course weak value is the outcome of a weak measurement procedure. I can add here in addition some weak other weak coupling and to test this weak value to know the real weak value, and I will show that it's not given by this initial and final state. And um, the pointer of strong measurement still show me something interesting, but different, will not show me weak value. There is some interesting property of a standard measuring procedure when we use a Gaussian pointer, what I discussed before. If my pointer is a Gaussian pointer, I make my measurement strong, I change my weak value. And uh, so, of course, uh, my reading also changed. It's happened that they changed together. Somehow it's a miracle. Uh, when I perform measurement with the Gaussian pointer, even the strong measurement, the reading of this measuring device will be the weak value. And this is kind of, but again, no, not conceptually, conceptually, uh, Kind of a miracle doesn't follow from ideology. Follow from ideology if I consider weak coupling. Weak coupling, psi doesn't change, phi doesn't change, and we have weak value at every moment of time. We have this weak value. Uh, but when we have strong measurement, they all change, they become entangled, complicated. Still, the pointer reading will show the weak value. Okay, Le let me uh, talk a little about robust weak measurement. It's another argument why I believe that this is a property of a single system. Usually people say, uh, there are some people who attack uh, this concept saying it's kind of statistical with post-selection. And if I can get this weak value by single click, so no one can tell me that this is a statistical property. So measurement of weak value of a variable, and there are particular variables which I can consider like this. And in this case, we don't need an ensemble. It is interesting that this result is a kind of predecessor of weak value concept. Essentially, uh, th this, 87, the weak value paper is 88. 
But this is was kind of rare. Uh, so this is not general because we need particular observable. But this is was this was found uh, even before Wikvelius, long time ago. And only recently, with the Italian group, we uh, it was the first experiment uh, showing this. There are many experiments with weak measurement, but they all kind of standard weak measurement with weak coupling. Here we had a relatively strong coupling, so it's strong enough so we can use only one click to find the weak value. Now, again, this wasn't very weak, you see. When it's very weak, then the pointer is very, very wide. This pointer wasn't too wide. And what we measure, we measure this polarization uh, operator of seven photons. Each one is plus minus one. So the sum of seven, it's plus one plus minus seven. Uh, but we consider the weak value with particular pre and post selection, which was amplified. The weak value was around 20. This is kind of uncertainty of my pointer. It was originally sitting around zero. And uh, the eigenvalue, the maximal eigenvalue plus seven, min min minimal minus seven. So, uh, and again, because this pointer is not really very, it's, it's not strong, but it's not exactly weak. So because of this, uh, if we'll use this pre and post selection, we'll, come, we'll get this number. But if we'll take into account the interaction with our measuring device, then it spoils it somewhat. And so the weak value calculated, it's really 18. Still, far away of the initial position of a pointer. So we pre-selected this state and we performed the measurement. This was mixture of our pointer. Now you see pointer was like this, and now it's wider. Why it's wider? Because it's moved up to seven. There are some amplitude with seven, some amplitude with five, all this amplitude. So we have this mixture, oh, entangled mixture of pointers because they're entangled to my system. Uh, and this is kind of wide. Still, far away, 18 is kind of, no amplitude. Now we make post selection. And out of post selection, we'll get our pointer here around this 18. It's, uh, you see, before it was like this. You don't see, but of course, there are tails here. It's not if zero, we cannot get anything here. There are tails of this thing far away. They entangled with uh, our system. We post select on this state. And then there is superposition of this uh, um, send one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight Gaussian. Superposition of this eight Gaussian give us uh, they kind of make destructive interference all over here and constructive interference here. And this is what we get. And uh, now, if this is a pointer, then when we look on it just once, we look at it just once and get this number. This number give us not precise, but some information about weak value. Because uncertainty, this is the uncertainty of our pointer. It's well, was uh, around, the uncertainty was around five, if you can look on kind of widths of this. You see. This is our first click. To verify this, we repeated it many times, and this is histogram of the how many clicks we'll get. Again, one experiment, one click, we know roughly the, this weak value. If we repeat it 20 times, we'll, we will know it's much better. But you see, all these clicks were kind of, most of them were around here. This is theory of what we were supposed to get. This is the experimental uh, result. And you see, yeah, the quantum mechanics tell us that the pointer moves maximally up to seven. All this results far away. Anomalous weak value is a property of a single print post selected system. So, this is what shows this experiment. Uh, okay. So, 
the my claim is that uh, the system is really described uh, that this two state vector and this weak value observable is really a property of every pre post selected system. Any coupling of a system to a variable O for a short enough time is a coupling to the weak value. The outcome of a weak measure, from here we can prove that the outcome of a measurement with weak coupling is a weak value. But it's not that we started from here. They start from this ontological claim. And then we make a claim about measurements. Um, this is uh, this picture of this wave function. Again, what I showed before it was original pointer. Then it was shifted. Uh, ah, OK. So here we will consider just uh, weak value of O as an outcome of weak measurement. Um, you remember what we showed uh, before, this was eigenstate, this was superposition, and this was uh, the shift only what we got this two, and then it was shifted. And this weak value um, in this term, again, this is weak value 11. This cannot be found by one click. Here we had to make one click. But I still want to say that this shift, I want to say that this shift is as if it was eigenvalue 11. It's very, very close to this shift. We had this Gaussian, original one. If the eigenvalue is 11, this Gaussian, without changing, will move here. And the claim is that when we have this pre and post selection, it roughly moves here. It moves very closely here. The center is around 11. But moreover, the Gaussian was not distorted. OK. Any coupling to a system described by two state vector for a short time is a coupling to the weak value. What I want to say is that this one with the superposition, we wanted to say that this is also weak value. The expectation, here we have expectation value zero, no, no post selection. But this pointer is a mixed pointer. It doesn't look like the original pointer. I want to say that this is, before we said that weak value is good and the eigenvalue is good and expectation value is good. Now I have to say that if I look more closely on my pointer, I will say that this is not so good. That this is not described properly by the original, uh, original state of my, of my, uh, of my system. This, even it's shifted very far. This is Gaussian, very much like the original one. This one is kind of a density matrix. And uh, although the center is sits in the right place, but if I have an eigenvalue, and there is a very big difference between eigenvalue one and expectation value one. These pointers are very, very different. <coughs> OK, so this is what I want to persuade you, that coupling to a system by a very short time is a coupling to a weak value. We can also make uh, just simple calculation. Although I see that my time is start to be not, I don't have too much time, so let's do it maybe. Um, but maybe in the summer school, it's important. So I have a coupling to, to everything, which is described by B. By coupling uh, to everything through variable C. I claim that this coupling is effectively coupling to an eigenvalue, like C number, the weak, given by this, the, 
expression, the weak value expression. You have a pre and post selected system, and the coupling is through a particular observable, then essentially, effectively, the coupling is, is to weak value and not to a operator. So the number. So let's prove it. Before the coupling, I had uh, my environment, everything around was described by Kai. My C later, it was described by news. And I claim that this change is as if it was really, we had this Hamiltonian. Really, we had this Hamiltonian and psi and phi was print post selected. What I say is that if I will use this formula as pre selected and exact, just eigenvalue or just C number, it will be also the same. So let's calculate what's going on. We start with the product, system, my uh, everything else and my system. We apply our coupling. This is our Hamiltonian for a very short time. And then we post-select immediately after we post-select state five. I claim that this thing is equivalent to the coupling to this. Um, this is really our state here. I can calculate first when dt is infinitesimally small, I can take this operator and decompose it up to the first order. Then I can make very simple uh, manipulation. I can uh, multiply this uh, divide by scalar product and take the scalar product out. You see, I have this, this is just one, so psi one. So this is, I take this essentially Scalar product they take out, but then I have to divide by scalar product here. You see, I have this expression. I look on this expression, I say again, yeah, it was operators, so which I did kind of, I took this operator and put, make an expansion. Then I'll get this number. This is number and make an expansion. And the number is just, uh, again, I can bring it back to this formula, but this is weak value. So I got this. They think, and they think it's exactly what will happen if I have Hamiltonian like this. So what I say is that my Hamiltonian tells me that effective coupling is, is to this weak value. Now, I do want, let me now to change gear and kind of briefly go over what I wanted to say without put going into details because I don't want to allow questions. And if there will be no questions then I can come back and say more details about this. So the main claim, pre and post selected system, coupling for a very short time, it's effective coupling to this weak value. Uh, and um, so, this is kind of exact thing when we have a, um, this is what I believe, this is what I want to say. Uh, one can think that for a very short time, maybe the same thing happening with expectation value. It clearly happened with eigenvalue. With eigenvalue, no question. This is exact formula. With weak kind of value, it's, this is what I claim. And um, maybe, uh, Small explanation, maybe we can expect that this is also true. Uh, again, to compare this, we consider uh, cases when weak value, eigenvalue, and expectation value are all numerically equal, some particular number C. And then we want to compare it. Moreover, we also made even an experiment. And uh, the experiment showed that, in, that uh, this is not so good. Uh, the, the expectation value is not good. This and this are really more or less the same. This, indeed, when all these numbers are equal, C weak, C case, C is I C. But at this equality, it's very much the same like this one. So this is very much the same. But this, in fact, much, much worse. They're all close, but this is much, there is a big distance between this and this and the eigenvalue and very little dis distance between this and this. 
So it's not so easy to see because they all, since it's very infinitesimal time, they're all close to the original one. The changes, what's so interesting. This is a question. If the change between this and this is much smaller than the change between this and this. First, um, now uh, here there is, uh, during the course, you look, you study a lot of uh, formalism. I use formalism only when it's needed. And here um, I do have to use some mathematics, which are a little uh, bigger. Why do not need it? Because I want to compare between this situation and this situation. This is density metric, this is pure state. Then Burris angle allows me to make this um, comparison because it's Burris angle allows me to compare between states, but also between density metrics and state. And uh, mathematical analysis, which I don't go here, tell, tells me that, that I'm right. The difference between this and this is proportional to dt, while the difference between this and this is proportional to dt squared. dt is infinitesimal parameter. So clearly, when dt is very small, then this difference is much smaller than this difference. So um, the example for which we kind of made an experiment of spin one particle and kind of trivial cases, the eigenvalue was just zero. The expectation value, of course, should be the same number. The eigenvalue was zero. Expectation value was also zero. It was equal superposition minus one and plus one, also zero. Weak value was also, of course, we needed zero, and it was very trivial weak value. What I did, I post-selected the same state like pre-selected. Without post-selection, it's expectation value. With post-selection, although it looks very similar, I claim it's different, it's weak value. Of course, the number is the same. And uh, we see the numbers, expectation value, weak, weak value. This is a formula, and psi psi is one. But I say not equivalent. The pointer reacts differently to expectation value or to weak value. It shifts to the same center, but it disturbs. There is a big disturbance when it's expectation value. Um, okay. So let me maybe uh, this just, uh, this is, uh, if I look on the graphs, this is density matrix, and this is expectation value, and, uh, and this is weak value. Uh, they all kind of show the same center, but I say this is much more close to the original one than density matrix. Um, we performed the experiment, which I don't think I have now time to describe. We really made the experiments very difficult experiment because everything is very small, but we have seen the difference and we have shown the difference which I described. Um, me measuring visibility, I le let me just go to conclusions because I want questions. We have at least some time for questions. This is the experiment, and also this experimental device showed us some interesting possibilities for applications, but this is not the main point which I wanted to say. But the main point is that the weak value is a property of a single system. So weak value is a property of a single pre and post-selected system at a particular moment of time. An ensemble is needed only to test that is true, and for some variables, a single click is enough. A pre and post-selected system interacts with external system during a infinitesimal time as if uh, the weak value is just an eigenvalue. And um, it is significantly different when coupling is to the expectation value. Then the coupling is not like an eigenvalue. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Wagner, for this wonderful. Yes.
Now we are now open for uh, some quick questions. So the questions you can should I see in the chat? You tell them a question. Of, yeah, I'm, I'm monitoring the chat also, but there is no question. I, I Oh, you can hear uh, people can ask questions. I probably will yeah, hear. Yeah, you can ask this. Yeah. Students, is there any question? Anyone? Yeah, Sai, please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for that nice talk, uh, Professor Weidman. Um, I, yeah, I don't know if you can see me. Okay. Yes, I, I see your picture, I think. Yes, you see my picture. Uh, so I was just, I, I, was, I was wondering, uh, I have two quick questions, and this is just my unfamiliarity with your uh, perspective on this. So the way I think about weak well amplification is I have a system, and then I post-select on the system with a different measurement instrument, and that essentially kicks the pointer um, in, in a way that is, uh, you know, that is different. But your point of view was basically to think about just the, the distribution of the pointer itself, right? To either think of it as a narrow version or a broad version. So if my post selection kicks, you say, yes. it kicks for future, it doesn't kicks for, for past. So how, how you, you, you said that your understanding, you have pre-selected it such and such. Then you have post-selection, which kicks it. Yes. And so now it will be different. No, but we look in between. Also, so originally one one said that sometimes uh, let's look uh, on a air temperature of a temperature of um, molecules in the room, uh -huh. and make post-selection all molecules which uh, has velocity faster than two uh, two kilometer per second. This is not what I'm doing. I'm, I make pre and post selected on, uh, I don't pre select, pre and post select on the observable I'm considering. If I post select on sigma z, I will never get sigma z bigger than one. I will get sigma z, which is what is equal. I, in my sigma x, sigma, sigma z equal 100, I pre select sigma x, post select sigma y. And ask yes, yes, what is no, the weak no, value yes. of another observable? Yes, yes, this is true. This is true. This is true. Uh, I, yeah, sorry. One uh, last question. The um, so you, you're differentiating between um, between the expectation value and the weak value, and you're saying that you know that, that these quantities, various quantities, are not the same, uh, but their averages are the same, right? So you're you're pinning all of the numerical values to be the same. Are you implying that the spread is different? You even kind of uh, said disturbance and made a motion with your hands as if you were saying that the, that the, that the, that the pointer um, looks different. Is, is this yes. the point? Okay. okay. Yes, the, yes, the point is you can consider it when we have a coupling to a measuring device or coupling to environment or coupling to whatever it is. If I have a coupling to expectation value, then um, I have a mixture of different kicks. The oh. average of these kicks shows me this expectation value. If uh, even when I'll go to very, very, very short time, I still have a kick, a mixture of different kicks. If I, I have a coupling to the weak value, then, and I look on my pointer, I don't see a mixture of kicks. I see as if one kick equal to the exactly weak value. As if there was one kick with eigenvalue, maybe is impossible eigenvalue, which is equal to the weak value, which is very different. So in the end of the day, in uh, I see uh, it looks like for very short time, in the limit of uh, vanishing time, the coupling is as an eigenvalue equal to the weak value, even that such an eigenvalue doesn't exist. And when I consider the mixed state, uh, this is not this, the story. If I look carefully uh, on my uh, measuring device or environment, I will see that it's made out of many kicks, uh, mixture of many different, uh, different states. But average is the same, but the state of the pointer is very different. So then uh, when it's expectation value, it's really not a property of a system because Every time I re repeat, it's once it's this kick, another, and another kick. But when I have a pre-post, <coughs> pre-post selected system, 
then I look on my coupling to this, it's like coupling to, I know exactly one system makes the same coupling every time. Okay? Sure, uh, yeah, I understand, thank you. Uh, there's a question in the chat. This is, box. Yes, uh, this is all what I wanted to say. Somebody asked in the chat, yeah. is it this property a thing of a single print post selected system? Weak value, again, it's weak value of observable. You have print post selected system, you have many weak values. Every, weight, uh, every variable will have its own weak value, but it's one weak value for every observable for every print post selected system. Uh, this is very short time, but still I have a question. So what happens to this the whole discussion about the reality of the quantum uh, values? I mean, for example, the, if you measure a one number measurement, you don't have the reality can be NCO within the theory. So you're saying that your weak value uh, corresponds to the reality, right? So in such a case, uh, what happens to the other, uh, I mean, the formulation of these realist models and the, uh, for example, the weak value, anomalous weak value is a closely related to the contextuality. So what type of reality was saying, how it is related to the other notion like contextuality? Okay, uh, I don't know if I should do this. Probably you had many talks with contextuality. I don't like this at all. I don't think this contextuality is helpful in any way whatsoever. But this is, so I, I will not connect it to any contextuality. I think it's people, uh, I don't like duality, complementarity, contextuality. I don't think it's helpful. I do like reality of uh, wave function of quantum state. And uh, in, I believe that there's the only reality is a quantum state and there is a one quantum state which corresponds to multiple worlds. And this is, uh, and it doesn't have weak values because it doesn't have uh, all worlds together. We have only one wave function and the forward evolving, a backward evolving function, one wave function. We might have this weak value, but the trivial one of one wave function. However, we live in particular world. In our world, we perform measurement. And when in our world, we performed two sequential measurement for us, our observers in this world, there is this complete reality of this weak, weak value reality um, of all this observable in our world. If we will look on our uh, old environment, all measuring devices, everything which coupled to our print post selected system, it will be as if it was a real eigenvalue, which eigenvalue kind of most people accept as reality. So the weak value reality is reality for us in particular world. And many people don't believe that only there is one world, then it's no problem. So of course, then it has reality. In our world, when we, again, it doesn't, it exists only kind of a, a posteriori. We have this pre-selection, post-selection, and we discuss the system after it. But the system coupled during this period, so we can see consequences of this coupling. So it is relevant for us. So this, it's, it's important for us. So this reality, okay. um, some people say that, in fact, the same group which made this anomalous weak value made the a first experiment for the protective, protective uh, measurements, which was kind of an argument from my point of view, not too strong for reality of a single, um, I believe in reality, uh, but this protective measure, weak measurement shows reality of protected wave function. A protected wave function, some people say, oh, you ch check the uh, reality of your protection. But still it was one system, so. Single system, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Is there any more questions? Uh, already our time is over. So, 